You guys are Christian or Muslim? In between? Huh? Oh, okay, so what do you know about Islam? So, so, like, what is the thing that is stopping you, if I ask you, what is the thing that you think is stopping you to become Muslim? My family. Your family? Yeah, they're Christian. Okay, uh, just to give you an advice, because my wife is a revert. Yeah. And I'm a Shetim when she was 14. Yeah. By herself, yes? How, how did she find out about Islam? So, basically, she, she said one thing did not make sense to her. Of course, she went to school. But one thing did not make sense to her, that if Jesus is God, how he was praying to God. Yeah, exactly. It not make sense to her. So she went, when she went to school, her family took her to a different school. So the school she was before, there was not a lot of Muslims. So when, they, when she took her to a different school, her mom and her father, or her stepfather, she started mixing with the Muslims. And they started saying, yes, we believe in Jesus. However, we believe God is perfect. We don't believe Jesus to be God. We don't believe Prophet Muhammad to be God. We believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. We believe Jesus was the messenger of Allah and the Messiah. You understand? So it makes sense to her. So what you have to understand, sister, in Islam teach us in the Quran, even if your parents, even if your parents are disbelievers, you still respect them, take care of them. However, there's priorities that when you die, your parents love you so much, no doubt, that they will not be with you inside the grave. They will put you inside the grave and they will leave you. That's what Allah said in the Quran. I will say in Arabic, then translate it. On the day of judgment, when the father will, will flee from his son, the mother will flee from her daughter, everyone will say, myself, myself today. Understand? So don't let your parents, watch, sister, watch, sorry, sorry, sister. Don't let your parents stop you to accept the truth. If it makes sense to you, say, is it truth? I mean, I don't know, how old are you, if you don't mind asking? I'm 20. You're 20. I'm saying, look, you're, you're, you're like, adult. My wife, she's 14, and took that decision. Because why? How did her parents react? I'm going to come to that. So what happened when she became Muslim, she used to pray, hiding. Then she had, I don't want to go in details, she had a problem with her parents, okay? Alhamdulillah, afterwards, I got married to her, all right? And this is a funny story, because her mother, she wanted to kill me. She said, yes, I'm going to catch this guy in bush. I'm gonna... Anyway, I said, to, I said to my wife once, let's go visit your mom. I said, no, no, I said, let's go visit her. So I took her, we went to visit her outside London. That day was raining. And uh, when we went to the house, she told me how I treated my wife. That's why it's true sometimes, actions is louder than words, you know? When she told me how I treated my wife, even how I treated her respectfully, she loves me now. She said, uh, she always called my wife, said, tell my son to come. You see, well, alhamdulillah, because Allah will open doors for you. But sister, you have to be strong, because you are, you are your own existence. Everything within you is from God. You understand? Let me give you an example. Imagine you're in the house, may Allah forbid, and there's a fire everywhere, and you're about to die. You try your best, you try your best to save yourself. And I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me? Would you remember me all the time? Of course, I saved your life. Then I think, you know what, Shamsi, but sister, I never gave you a life. So why don't you remember and pray to the one who gave your life for free? You understand? You know, if you noticed, when I, if I saved your life, you never, you, you didn't say, let me ask Shamsi, do you beat up your wife? You kill people? You, you thank me straight away. Because I saved something very dear to you. What about God who gave you everything? Who gave you eyes, everything? You know, you know I was asking this gentleman a question. Why Islam is in, 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 uh, spreading? And guess what? That is in the Quran. Allah said, Who will let the Arsal Rasulah be Huda? It's Allah who sent his Prophet Muhammad with the truth and Islam in order for Islam to overpower all the religions, even if the enemies of Islam dislike it. Now we know there is a huge war against Islam. There is a huge war against Islam. But guess what? The fastest growing religion of the face of the earth is what? Islam. So who's doing the job? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you examples. I'm sorry for taking your time. No, it's okay. Thank you very much for giving your time. Let me tell you something about why we believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of Allah and why Islam is very special and Islam distinguished from any way of life or religion. When it comes to Islam, Islam came to preserve five things. 
and I want you to pay attention to it. Yeah? Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? Worshipping God alone. Paganism, atheism, polytheism is forbidden. Worshipping Allah alone is very, very important. Because when you don't worship Allah alone, you start following your desires. All right? That's the first one. The oneness of Allah. Secondly, Islam came to preserve intellect. Came to preserve what? Intellect. That's why alcohol and drugs is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. Yeah, wealth. That's why uh, uh, gambling and interest is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to preserve marriage, families, heritage, lineage. That's why fornication, adultery is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why committing suicide, killing people unjustly is forbidden. These five things that Islam came to preserve, not just came to preserve them, also there's a barrier, punishment for anyone to break them. Why? Because if we do break these five necessities, we will corrupt our society. Let me ask you, alcohol, is it good for us or bad for us? Individually and collectively. Gambling, is it good or bad? Yes, bad, thank you. Collectively and individually. Interest is bad. Why interest is bad? Make the rich richer, poor poorer. Interest is a type of manipulation. Islam teach us, if you are my sister in Islam, you are in need of money, I will give you money, but I will not utilize your need to tell you, listen, I'm going to give you 5,000, but give me back 10,000. Because I know when you're desperate, you will accept any condition. You understand? Rather, I said, look, sister, this is the help. What you do, you can give it back to me. If you don't, if you don't have, may Allah forgive. I got a reward from Allah. So, so uh, likewise, what fornication destroy families. So these five and all of these things goes back to the most evil thing, which is when you turn away from your creator. But I'll tell you something. There is some people do benefit from these vices, alcohol, gambling, interest. Who are they? Majority of times, those who are in power. That's why those who are in power, majority of times, they are very hostile to Islam because they're rich. They make Islam look bad through the media by using their money, even though Islam is good for us individually and collectively. The question we should ask ourselves, how a man, Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, existed 1,400 years ago in the middle of desert. He couldn't read or write. He came with his perfect way of, way of life because he was what? Messenger of Allah. Does it make sense? Clear? So what I will say to you, you know, I always tell the people that imagine you have a cake, big cake in front of you. If you eat all of it, what will happen to you? Maybe you get sick before that. You vomit, yeah? In order for you to feel the sweetness of the cake, what do you do? You take it bit by bit, likewise Islam, step by step. The first, most important pillar is the Shahadatan. Where is Shahadat? The two testimony. That Allah bear witness. There's no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. That's how you become Muslim. Prophet Muhammad told us when someone becomes Muslim, all his sins is forgiven. Then you step by step, you start learning. But what I will say to you, if you die and you don't accept, you don't accept Islam, don't blame you, no one except yourself. Because Allah, based upon his mercy, created paradise. Based upon his anger, created the hellfire. However, he gave you a free will to choose to follow or reject. But your parents is not a valid excuse before your creator to not accept Islam. You don't have to tell your parents straight away. What you can do, become Muslim, alhamdulillah, because yeah, it's better. Other well. Like what, I alhamdulillah? Don't speak Arabic. How do I learn how to pray? No, how to you, speak Arabic? <laughs> that's a good question. But you don't have to speak Arabic to become Muslim. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. How do, step, like, step by step. For example, example, that's what I said to you. There is pillars of Islam. Yes. So the first pillar is the Shahadatan, professing and accepting, Oh Allah, you my Lord, I should worship you alone, and I believe the message of Allah. Of course, there's other pillars, the prayer and charity, believing the angels. The when you accept that, then step by step you start learning. Now, if you have to pray, you don't know Surat Fatiha. So there is words that you say, glorification. You stand, so it's easy. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. If you don't know it, then you learn it, then you start praying. You don't have to pray straight away. But what I'm saying is, let me give you an example. If you want to learn how to drive a car, do you learn inside the car or outside the car? Inside the car. And to turn on the car, what you need? A key. And that key that you need 
to learn more Islam is the key called Shahadatan. That's what we call it. The Shahadatan, the first pillar of Islam, called the key of paradise. So don't let this stop you because Allah is the most merciful. You know, may Allah forbid if you become Muslim now, you know, and you die, may Allah forbid, inshallah, you become Muslim. When I say may Allah forbid, mean if you die today and you become Muslim, if you die and you're Muslim, Allah, you straight to a paradise, even though you haven't prayed. You understand? Even though you haven't prayed. But you said the most important thing. Because the first message that Allah gave to Jesus, Moses, Abraham, is Shahadatan. If I was alive at the time of Jesus, I would say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna Isa Abdullah wa Rasulah. I would say, there's no one worthy of worship except Allah. And Isa is the messenger of Allah. And now the last prophet is Muhammad. So you say it. Like, you know, in Arabic, I can help you say in Arabic, then translate it in English, then you start learning step by step. I was elite yesterday. And you know, subhanAllah, I forget, I was elite. Another English girl became Muslim. I'm standing at the dawah table, preaching. She came and she was asking me a question. Then I spoke to her, she became Muslim. After that, English guy became Muslim too. And before that, a Romanian guy became Muslim. So in Romania, I'll show you, well, let me show you that. I'll show you, man. Let me show you this guy. And subhanAllah, look, this is the one. What's the name of this? Where is it? Here we go. It's too tall, you know. I was gonna stand on the chair. Where is that? Is that the mosque? Yeah, in the mosque. He came, but it does have to be in the mosque. Like you can hear, hear him. He said, "I don't Romanian that have Islam." He's a Romanian. She's a Romanian. Subhanallah, you see. So two, we're gonna have two, inshallah. So don't. Let so one of his reasons, he said, he said, look, brother Shamsi, one of Shamsi, he said, I'm rich, he has money. He said, but I read Christianity, no peace, no tranquility. Doesn't make sense to me. I'm reading Quran about Islam, I find it peace, and it's making sense to me. So he said, you know what? I knew this religion must be the truth. And he became Muslim. Andrew you understand? Andrew Tate, yeah, you know Andrew Tate. Yeah. He became Muslim as well. Yeah. I'm doing that. You know, you know, sister in Islam teach us, we cannot open the heart of the people. Yeah, if someone become like if, if become Muslim today, I don't know what will happen to you in the future, but I take the apparent, you know. What we do, we pray. Of course, there are some things he mentioned in the past. He himself he admits he was wrong. You understand? Because Islam teaches us to take care of our wives, take care of our sisters, take care of our daughters, especially, especially our mothers. A man kept the Prophet Muhammad, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, who deserves my companionship more? He said, Your mother. He said, Then who? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your father. So our mothers has more right over us, my sister. You understand? So what I would say to you, if it makes sense to you, it's clear. But because remember, sister, there is nothing guaranteeing this life except death. How many people left the houses, then never come back? How many people won't sleep, then never wake up? This is the reality. That's why Allah threatened his enemies with death. Because you're going to die. So if it makes sense to you, it's clear to you. You should become Muslim, alhamdulillah. Then you learn step by step. Say shahadatan, alhamdulillah. If you do that, if you do die, may Allah forbid, you will go to Jannah, inshallah. You understand? Shahadatan, alhamdulillah. Huh? How do you know? Are you going to live tomorrow? I don't know. Say, sister. You know, sister, look. The Prophet Muhammad taught us when someone wants to become a Muslim, Satan will try his best to stop her, stop him. Well, lie, seriously, because let me ask you a serious question and think about it. Imagine you die today and you stand before Allah and He said to you, why you did not accept Islam? What's a reason you think you will say it to Allah and you think will be valid? Well, lie, there's no reason except shaitan. And let me ask you, if you know someone is your worst enemy, would you follow him? So is Satan is our worst enemy. You know, we have like in our bodies, there's two, there's an angel and devil. The angel that wants you to accept the truth, but the devil tries to stop you. So Wallahi, I know maybe if you put in like under pressure or something, no. 
You know, many times you do evil things up in front of everyone. You're going to accept the truth. You're going to worship your creator, the one you've been cutting off. But Allah is better off to become Muslim today. When you leave, alhamdulillah, and I've been doing this for 15 years. Never, it's my brother Jamal Abu Kanza with me all the time. We will tell you, never someone accept Islam. And he came back and said, you know what, brother? I should not, you know what, I regret accepting Islam. They always come back and say, you know what, I should have done it earlier. He's a revert. He became Muslim when he was 17. You understand? So don't let us stop you. That is no, you stuff, you know that you have no excuse. You have no reason for not accepting Islam today. Yeah, khalas, become Muslim. I wouldn't do it. Forget the cameras. Forget the cameras. Okay, like, I'm not assuming anything bad, but I know a lot of people do this for as well. No, 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 forget the cameras. I will say, look, where is your friend? Left you something? Yeah, my friend is No, come, come, say. Come, 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 forget the cameras. Come, come, just come, 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 come. Just come. Don't follow, don't follow.